a cable of a crane that is lifting a load of 782 kilograms brakes when the load was 13 meters in the air. See, calculate the potential energy the moment that the cable breaks. Okay, so it's not a very difficult question because potential energy is simply mass times gravity times height. Okay, since we have the mass 782, we have gravity is normally, let's see, they tell us what GTs they don't, so we assume it's 9.8. Okay, and the height, it told us that it was 13 meters up in the air. So what do we get? We get 782 times 9.8 times 13. 9966.8 joules. That is what its potential energy. That does not look like a crane at all. Okay, let's draw a very basic crane. Rather it looks like hangman than a crane. Okay, 13 meters up in the air. And here at the top, its potential energy is equal to 99626,8 joules. Okay, uh, next question. After the load has fallen 3 meters, calculate the potential energy. So after it's fallen 3 meters, okay, it is now at 10 meters up in the air because it's lost 3 meters. Okay, so the potential energy this time still no more difficult than the previous one. The only change is the height. Mass is 782. Gravity is 9.8. And height is 10. This time height is 10. When we calculate that, 782 times 9.8 times 10. 76636. 76636 joules. So that is the potential energy at this point. 76636 joules. Next question. Calculate the kinetic energy of the load. Now that's still after it has fallen three meters. Okay, now we know that the mechanical energy in the beginning, the total mechanical energy in the beginning is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy, but it, it was at 13 meters and it just started dropping, so its initial uh, kinetic energy was zero. So we're not assuming that it is going upwards which means that its total mechanical energy is the total or the um, potential energy it has in the beginning. So at this point, okay, we know the potential energy and we want the kinetic energy and we know that the two together gives me mechanical energy and mechanical energy at any point during this fall must always be the same. Okay? So it means it must be the same as that. So what we have is that potential energy of 76636 uh, six, joules plus the kinetic energy at that point must equal the original mechanical energy of 99626,8. Which means my kinetic energy is simply 996.8 26.8 minus the potential energy 36 gives me 22990,8 joules. And the final question is calculate the velocity that the load hits the ground with. Okay. So now we finally have that we are hitting the ground. Loud bash. Okay, here in the ground. 
what is that velocity it hits the ground with? Well, again, we're using this mechanical energy uh, conservation principle. In other words, the mechanical energy here at the bottom, when it hits the ground, must be exactly the same. Now, when it hits the ground, our potential energy is zero. And our kinetic energy is given by the formula a half mass times velocity squared. And these two values together must give me the mechanical energy I have had from the very beginning when it dropped. Okay, so we find that zero plus a half the mass 782 times velocity squared must equal my uh, mechanical energy that I've had from the beginning 99626,8 and that means that velocity squared is what I get when I divide both sides with these two numbers and what do I get? 99626,8 divided by a half nine nine six two six point eight divided by point five divided by seven eighty two equals two five four comma eight but for velocity okay, equals and plus minus because I'm taking a square root on both sides 15.96 15,96 now since I used G as positive okay, and G was downward sorry and since my uh, load is falling downwards okay, I can either write downwards or I can just use the positive value, okay, which in any way, if I write downwards, I leave it positive in any way, because downwards is positive, and that is the indirection, and that's it.